Hey, it's Chris. I went through something yesterday that I thought I would share with you. I caught myself reacting out of habit and then realized maybe this is something that other people might not know or at least something that someone could benefit from. And it goes like this. How many times have you started your day where you have an agenda, you have things planned that you're going to accomplish in that day, but something just interrupts that. You don't get to do what you had planned to do. And then you end up the day going, man, I thought I was going to get all this stuff accomplished. There's the old saying of, eat your frog, which means do the toughest thing that you have to do, the most uncomfortable, the worst thing that you have to do. Do it first in the morning, eat your frog, because everything else later in the day can will be much easier than the worst thing than eating a frog. So you start off your day with this agenda, this to-do list of things you're going to accomplish and then you've lost the day. Well, how does that happen? It happens because you've been stolen from all day long. People steal your time. There's no more of a precious commodity I've learned in my old age at 50 years old now. There's nothing that can hurt you worse in your potential for success and growth in your business and growing things to scale than being sucked into a time warp where someone wants to take your time. And there are time thieves everywhere. Even those people with best of intentions to include friends and family and potential clients. Share with you a story what actually happened yesterday and I, I realized what was going on we had two situations. One was where a lady had called in, spoken with one of my agents, and she had set her whole criteria based on someone else in the industry. Someone else had told her, this is your buying criteria. This is what you need to look for. And that included things like just the A rating with AM Best. That's what you need to look for. And you need to look for how many covered lives this particular plan has in that particular state both of which are markers to be sure, but they're not the most definitive thing that you should be looking for when choosing the longevity and the future rate increase potential of a insurance company of an insurance company for the purposes of Medicare supplement. But this lady had it firmly implanted in her mind, this buying criteria that she was going forward with and quizzing multiple agents to see if they could come up with an idea or an answer suitable for her buying criteria. So this agent of mine said, this person's asking for how many insured lives. I can't nail down that information for this particular carrier in this particular state. She's also asking about this and about that. Things that are not relevant whatsoever. So that could be a potential time suck. So I would want to find out right away, where did you get this buying criteria? Which is, how did you come to determine that this is the most important thing when you're selecting a plan? Did you get this when you went to insurance school, when you got your insurance degree? Are you a risk manager? I mean, where did you come up with this information? And then you'll go to the source of it and find out that it was all just a frivolous uh, wild goose chase from the very beginning and get them back on target so you don't lose your time. And so either the person's going to coalesce, get in there, get in line with the things that are important, and that all comes down to trust and credibility. If they believe that you are, you are the de facto standard, you are the source of the information, based on experience and years and thousands of different clients, you know, having watched the trend of people as they mature in their policies, which companies to look for based on what criteria. So if you can get them on board with that at the very beginning, you're going to be fine because then you set the criteria for what's most important based on your experience. Some will listen and some won't, but the ones that don't, you've got to learn to cut your losses. If they're so emboldened into the fact that they know what's best and you're just the lowly insurance agent and they're putting you on the witness stand and trying to cross-examine you to catch you up on something, just to trip you up on something that they're going to hold against you and go, uh-huh, see there? See, yep, you're just like all the rest. Take this advice for what it's worth. It's probably worth a lot. Don't fall for that. Don't waste an hour of your time trying to convince someone. There's an old saying that I heard a long time ago, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. You may drag them across the finish line to do an application, but as soon as you get off that phone, that buyer's remorse and whoever put that bug in their ear with the wrong source of information is going to continue to replay and replay and replay in their mind until the point that they're going to say, you know what, I changed my mind. I don't want to go with that company after all. It sounded good while you're on the phone and you're just pushing me and pushing me and pushing me to do the right thing. I don't really think it was the right thing after all. So. Enough of those things that happen in your life will lead you to the ter determination that that's not something you should go down the path. Trying to convince somebody, trying to convince somebody. If they don't want your help, move on. Second example, I had a lady call me 
and she's telling me everything about the insurance industry. She, first, she was, and the reason why I called her ahead of everyone else, she was scared to death. She uh, just lost her mother. She was uh, just freaked out. Yeah, she's 65 years old. Just lost her mom, and she's in mourning still, just completely stressed out, doesn't know what to do, and all this kind of stuff. So I call her on the phone. Hey, I'd be glad to help. Thanks for reaching out. How can I be of service to you? What do you know so far? And I always start the conversation with, what do you already know so far? So I don't waste your time going over, here's how Medicare works. Here's part A, here's part B. So many agents get into this repetition cycle of just spewing on people. And that again is another time waster. So just pick up where they left off and say, hey, where are you in the process? And how can I be of service to you? What do you already know? This lady goes on to tell me everything about every insurance carrier. So many people have United Healthcare by Art, and they love it that some of them started in New York, some started here. Brokers hate it. They hate yep. it. Yep. They won't sell it. They hate it. And okay. everybody else seems to love it. And I don't. You know, I don't know if they don't know or they were just put into it or maybe it's lower when they started up in New York. Sure. I don't know. I don't know yeah, what the reason is. One of the highest, highest rated zip codes in America for the cost yeah. of Medicare supplement. There's no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. Palm Beach County, it is very, I mean, New York supposedly on things are high, but some things they're lower. I, I, it's very high here. Very, very high. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're right. If you move back to New York, uh, you can get a New York domiciled plan, and then you can have open enrollment all the time. The rates in New York, because of that law, are actually higher than where you are in Florida. Because it's community-based and it's higher. I know some people say, well, no, they're higher. They're oh, they higher than York. Yeah, we have, I just worked two of them this yeah. morning. The only question is something. Okay, um, well, the lowest plan here is Cigna. It's only been here four years. It's not in New York. The, the, so there's a question about that. The next one, that's 226, which so many Florida agents love, is the United American. And United American is very, it's not consumer friendly. You need, you need a, um, a broker, an agent, somebody. Otherwise, you just get their, their customer hey, service. You know, I hate yeah. to interrupt you, but can I ask you a question? Um, yeah. You're telling me with this stuff that I would be telling you as an agent, so it sounds like you've been talking to a whole bunch of different agents, and I've got 70 yep. people. Research, back. research, just right. researching it. So let me just, let me just ask you a point. So why don't you tell me Do you have any what, intention of yeah. doing business with us, or are you just using us for research? Because we really don't um, have No, time. no, 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 no. I'm, I'm trying to look to, to somebody that can help me with this decision. I don't want to – I don't know what okay. to do. I really, really don't know what to do. I don't have the time today to listen to you tell me everything that I already know about Medicare. So then you t you tell me, like, if I were to pick a plan that's not up in New York and end up in New York, what would happen? That's one question. And then finally I had to jump in and say, look, I've got whatever it was at the time on the voicemail sheet, 70, 100, whatever it was, uh, voicemails of people that I need to call back because they need my help and they're waiting on professional guidance to get them to where they need to be. I appreciate you giving me the lecture about where the companies are, but you're telling me things that I already know and I don't have time for that, I'm sorry. I'm trying to do my best to help as many people as I can within the confines of a limited time frame, and I gotta get going. So is there anything that you need my help for or do you already have your insurance license and you're gonna handle it yourself? Or are you just gonna go directly to the company? So, you know, in preparation for leaving the house this morning, I asked my wife, Nicole, what can I share that would, that would help the agents? And I'm trying to come up with a topic of something recent that really did happen. And she said, just tell them to be really patient with your clients. Just tell them to be really patient with the older people. And, um, and I was already formulating a concept in my mind. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's not, that's not what we, we do. We are patient with them to the extent that they need patience. And we'll listen to the stories, we'll listen to the where they are in their situation and all that. But you, there comes a, a time where you have to have discernment. You, you, can't, you can't go through your business thinking it's all going to be okay as long as I listen to everything that they have to say. At some point, you've got to have that triage mentality of let's get to the point so that I can actually help you. And when you see someone deviating from that and really not having respect for your time as well, it has to be a balance of you helping them and them being respectful of your time. Some people, and maybe it's other insurance agents that call in and just try to waste your time all day, who knows, 
but they'll call in with an intention of telling you everything about your industry. And again, setting the wrong criteria. So this lady's telling me all about the electronic application process of United American and how she's heard about their claims paying and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, all that may be true, but that stuff that we experience on a daily basis is not going to affect you long term. Would you like a professional recommendation? Let's move this thing down the path. And I had to just go out there and go, you know, verbally grab her and say, hey, let's, let's come back to reality here. You're talking about theory. <clears throat> You're talking about things that don't really matter. And we've got things to do. We've got to move this down the path. So let's go. What do we need to do here? How can I help you right now? Let's cut through that stuff. And I encourage you this, this is the punchline. If you'll spend more time being a vigilant guard of your time, not letting other people come in and just take your time away, whether that's uh, in the form of clients telling you, hey, will you put something in the mail for me? Just put something in the mail, send me some brochures, send me some rates, send me some quotes. If someone tells you just give me a quote on something, that is the least committal engagement you can possibly have with a potential client. And I'm telling you, most of those are going to turn into junk. While the Medicare supplement industry, if you're focused on Medicare supplements, is commoditized to a large degree. And I, I watch the uh, announcements from um, Thrivent and from IAC that they're pulling out of the insurance industry, or they're pulling out of Medicare supplement anyway. And then they cite in their reasons because this niche within the industry has become too commoditized. Well, it is if you don't have a brand, if you don't have a story, if you're not effective in distribution and all those kind of things. Wow. So I'm telling you, you as an agent, if you have strictly reduced yourself down to a commodity, and a lot of that starts with how you bring the, the prospect into your realm to begin with. If you're running Facebook ads or you're running Google ads, we've got the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest. Everything's based on price and price is the sole criteria upon which you should need to make your determination. You know, and I'll go back and completely confess, when I started in the Medicare supplement niche, I was wholeheartedly in on price is everything. Price is absolutely everything. You know, one of my catchphrases was, you know, some of these companies advertise in the Super Bowl and they've got a blimp flying over because they're making so much money from insurance. Well, they're making that because they're charging more premiums than they need to, and they're taking that overage of the profit and they're putting it back in advertisement. So if you see a big company advertising, that's where your premium dollars are going to. <clears throat> but because Medicare supplements are all the same, basically it's a commodity, you should shop on price. And it worked. I've since come to learn, experience has taught me along the way that there is something to be said for a company that is not the cheapest in the market. To say nothing of the fact that those that are the cheapest in the market typically have been in the industry for less than three years, they're granted a waiver because they have no experience and they can undercut the market just to the point that they're on their feet. And then in year three, you see this significant rate increase. So I share that experience with our potential prospects as well. So to reduce everything down to a commodity and you hear from someone, all I want is a quote, give me a quote. I'm telling you right now that most of those are going to turn out to be a miserable failure unless you can dance really good on the back end and express to them that there's more to the process of selecting a good company. If they're going to be with Medicare for more than a year, you need to look at more criteria than just price alone. And the other things that, that you talk about, we've talked about on Medicare agent training many times, so how to select the best carrier and all that. But there are people out there who will just absolutely waste your time. And while being patient, as Nicole says, you also have to be pragmatic. And you have to say, look, I've got only certain limited minutes of the day. I need to help people who are seriously interested in my expertise and my help. If you want to go through the process of getting your insurance license and studying actuarial science and finding out how they arrive at these rates and what their potential rates will be five years from now, you know, as the stockbrokers and commodities traders always say in their prospectus, uh, past performance is no guarantee of future performance. So while we have some markers and some indicators, we have to look at the overall trend. I think that's what gives us a competitive edge in the fact that we do operate from coast to coast, you know, Virginia all the way over to California and everywhere in between, is the fact that we see these trends on a national basis. And we'll share that with them. Since we're licensed across the country, we get notices from carriers and from departments of insurance where we see rate increase trends coming. 
you know, we'll see a company like uh, a Cigna start rolling out 18, 15% rate increases on a particular plan across the eastern seaboard, and then we'll know that uh, certain states like Florida and California are not so quick to approve rate increases. Well, if we're seeing this trend happen in other states, and we know that there are slower states to adopt uh, rate increase approvals, then we can safely assume that that same trend might happen because they are in our, a national footprint, might happen in states that are slower to adopt. So as we're going to make a recommendation and we're seeing trends like that, we can say, you know what, uh, it does appear to be the lowest right now, but here's what's going on nationally, and let's benefit from this national uh, scope and see how that's going to potentially affect you here in Florida, even though we can't sometimes see what the filed rate increases are, especially if not, they've not yet been approved by the Department of Insurance. So we can utilize our experience if they're going to listen and move them forward. Some people just want to tell you everything that they know and they want to tell you how smart they are, but that is not conducive to them bringing themselves on to you then and taking your recommendation and making you their agent. If you've not impressed upon someone the value that you bring as an agent, you're wasting your time. If you're constantly having them in control of the conversation from the beginning, this is the key takeaway. If they're constantly in control of the conversation the whole time, they may never let you get to the point where you're like, you know what, why don't we just reduce this to paper, get this out of the way so you can move forward and not have to worry about this anymore. Let's get this done. I already have most of your information because you gave it to us already. Let's just finish the application right now. You may never get to that point if you never get to have a word in there or you're always being defensive about criteria upon which is complete waste of time. And who knows where they come up with this buying criteria. Maybe they read it in an article. Maybe they read it in an article from Motley Fool, which just merely hires high school, or I'm sorry, college uh, interns and college graduates recent with no experience in life whatsoever. Just write articles. We want to throw some ads up. We're going to put ads out there, but we're going to bring people to watch our ads by publishing an article about Medicare and what you need to look for in a Medicare plan, and three things that will make you screwed over if you get the wrong Medicare plan, and uh, five cr key criteria to look for when buying a Medicare plan. What is the experience of the person that wrote that article in real life? And how many clients have they really served in their entire life? So if you want to get to the source of it and be a detective and find out, okay, here's the root of the problem, or I guess it's more of a Dr. Phil, like where did you get your insurance degree uh, my uncle was a surgeon growing up, and anytime someone would say something medical about, well, you know, I heard that that uh, symptom comes from a lack of vitamin D or whatever it is, he'd hear someone say these euphemisms, and he as a doctor would say, really, where did you get your medical degree? So I guess I bring that into insurance and asking the people, really, how long have you had your insurance license? Well, I don't. Okay, well then maybe you don't understand the factors that go into a company and it's way more than XYZ that you read from one article. And I understand, and this is true today more than ever before, seniors want to be educated and they're trying their best to educate themselves on what's involved in making a decision when it comes to buying insurance. And God bless them for that, but there's so much filth out there, so much garbage just to clog the internet airwaves, if it was on the air that many times the criteria upon which they've selected their entire life basis for making a decision is all wrong. And if they won't listen to you about what's important, if they won't give you the time of day and they won't pause long enough or just let you inject, you know, I had to, with this lady, I had to interrupt as nicely as I possibly could and say, wait, 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 wait. We're gonna waste all day talking about stuff that I already know in the industry. It's like you're reading the health book from getting your license to me all from the beginning, and I, I, I'm sorry, but I just don't have time for that. How can I help you today? You have to. Another takeaway. If you spend every conversation as if you have urgency, when you don't, then when you do have urgency, you do have to triage a voicemail list that's 100 people waiting for your office to call them back you'll be in the best position possible. And that's, I really believe, if you do that from the beginning, that's how you'll end up there. That's how you'll end up with so many people that you just can't even handle it all from referrals, all from referrals. How? Because you were professional to the point and didn't waste time with BS 
and spending too much time talking about their dog and their background and all this kind of stuff, which does not lend itself to being a professional. Think about this, okay? If you go in to see a cardiothoracic surgeon and you need to have something implanted in your heart, how much time will that professional that you trust and rely on, that you got referral to go in his office, how much time will he sit there and listen to what happened in your day? How much time will that professional, that expert with laser focused knowledge about what you came to see him for in his precious time, which is not infinite, how much time will he allow you to take from him to talk about completely random things that are not relevant? I would argue not much. And to the extent that a true professional, the best in his industry, will not allow you to usurp his time to take away from what he's got waiting patients in the other room, we need to have that same level of urgency in our business. And I'm telling you, if you develop that habit early, and I'm not saying be rude, I'm not saying to cut people off, I'm not saying to interrupt people, but there comes a time when you have to put your foot down and say, let's get back on track. Jordan Belfort and the straight line system made famous by the Wolf of Wall Street movie says it's the straight line. Okay, that's an interesting tangent. Let's get back on track. Let's get back on track. Where are you now in the process? What have you done? For turning 65, have you already applied for Part B? Where are you in that process? Did you already submit the paperwork? If you're not you know, drawing Social Security and it's automatic. Where are you in the pro? We need to get back on track here because I've got a lot of people to get back to on the phone. And if you establish that as your habit, that you will not let someone take your time, then when you do have a full agenda, tons and tons of people, and someone says to you, why don't you just mail me some quotes? You'll know better. You'll know that that's a smoke screen. You'll know that you have no chance in Hades of getting that business. And you'll realize, you'll realize it for what it is. And that's a time-sucking drain. It's like, look, you've already got enough junk mail from all these Medicare companies. And much of the mail is not even getting delivered right now anyway. What is it that I could put in the mail that would solve your inquiry right now? Because I could zip over information to you if it's legitimate. What are you looking for? What are you looking at? Let's make sure that you're looking at the most important things anyway so that we're not wasting both of our time. Because for me to get off the phone helping people all day and go over and print to mail a brochure, which is not gonna help you one iota, Maybe I could just solve that for you now. What's the real reason that you're trying to delay this process? Is it because you feel overwhelmed? Is it because you're not getting the answer that you're looking for? It's not having me mail something to you that's gonna solve that. There's an underlying issue here that's just bugging you. Why don't you tell me what it is so I can go find it and solve that for you while we're on the phone so I can help you make this problem go away. And the problem is the indecision. There's too much information. Let me cut it down for you. Put it into simple terms so that you can move forward and get this off your plate. Guard your time. And the proverb that says, don't brag about tomorrow because you have no idea what today's going to throw at you. If you spend every minute of your day with purposeful, a purposeful guard on your time, then I assure you, you're not going to end up your day at the very end going, man, that person took my time and wasted my time today. I got stuck on this phone call with this guy for two hours. He's not even going to be a buyer. He's not even going to let me be his agent. And yet I let him waste all that time. And if you're in the habit of already <clears throat> letting some prospect talk your whole day away, then I encourage you to start small. Just try it here and there. Just saying to them, you know what, can we get back on track? I've got to get this going. We've got people waiting. I've got my top of the hour appointment scheduled for me. Let me get to the quick here. What is the concern that you have? Where are you and what's your next step? Here's what I would recommend. Here's the rate. When you're ready to move forward, get back to me. I've got things to do. People want to do business with people who are busy. People who are busy are professionals. They're successful. They're busy. They have a full calendar because they don't put up with time wasting folks. Yes, I totally understand. I do work in the senior industry. I do understand that some people just want to have some companionship on the phone. They just want to have somebody to talk to. And to the extent that I can be um, compassionate and take the time that they need to build trust and rapport, 
and let them know that I truly am concerned about them. I try to do that, all of it, but I have to have a guard on my time. And when you realize that it's going off the rails and we're spending time on things that are not relevant, you've got to rein that in and act like it's an urgent situation. We've got to solve this problem now. Let's get going. I'm telling you, if you start that early in your practice, then when you are super busy and everyone in your office is doing the same thing, everyone's treating every call as if it's an urgent situation, it's got to be resolved, then we've got to move on. We've got to help somebody else. That's what we do. We're true professionals. I can't talk about, you know, lollipops and unicorns all day long. We've got to go. We've got things to do. We've got people to see. And I, and I know I've benefited from the fact that the clients will appreciate that. They'll appreciate the fact that you're not the one. You're not Dr. Phil. You're not going to solve all life's problems. And you're not the one to listen to all the, the stories about their entire life. You just don't have the time because you are a true professional. They'll respect that. You'll get a lot more business from it. And at the end result, if you have your team doing the same thing, you'll be much more successful in life having, having helped a lot more people. And if you think about it, if I can help three people in the course of two and a half hours, or I can help one by not getting control of the conversation, by not wasting my time, it's going to be better for three people and not just one person. you got to have some guts, though, and stand up for yourself. Stand up for your calendar. It's the best thing for them as well. It really is. I hope it's been of value to you. All my information's over at MedicareAgentTraining.com if there's anything I can do to help you. Oh, do me a favor. Would you um, like this video? It helps the YouTube algorithm. It helps other people to see it. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, I really encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I try not to waste your time. I'm trying to make the best use of my time as I'm driving into the office with a lot of things to do. I just want to share with you some things that I've determined along the way that might help somebody else and document this for my kids and grandkids if they ever are in our industry one day. God bless you in your pursuits. Bye. Get into one. Let's get going. Okay. And how did you find my information? Um, on the internet. <laughs>